I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Hathra Street. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Yeah, good. Well, it's uh, just about quarter to noon uh, in Melbourne. Um, so, yeah, it's it's. It's a good one. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's a great pleasure to connect with you. Uh, thank you for being here. Please tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time. Well, I think it's my leadership podcast and we, you reached out to me on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, so I guess it's, it's the podcasting. Yeah, most definitely. So who did you learn the skill? Or oh, before we even do that, let's talk about the podcast. So the name of it is Tall Poppy. Yes, that's right. So it's a podcast on leadership and it's very much about inviting a new paradigm of leadership and really highlighting the voices of a new style of leadership and really encouraging leadership at every level. So we're not waiting for others to lead. It's about leading ourselves and being inspired by people who are really doing that. One conversation at a time, right? It's what you exactly. said. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Most definitely. So I, I loved the conversation there. Super loved the last episode, which was with Stephen something. Stephen. Stephen Dunst Stephen from Leadership Dunst. Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. amazing stuff, my friend. Well done. So who did you learn the skill of a powerful conversation from? Ah, well, yeah, that's a good question. I, I feel like, um, I guess... the. Uh, Initially, I thought you were going to ask me about the skill of podcasting, and that's a very sort of um, a very different story. But the skill of a powerful conversation, I think I probably learned that from my mum. Yeah, she was an activist slash conference organizer. She organized um, holistic nurses um, when I was growing up. And so she was, you know, definitely having big, powerful conversations and challenging the status quo. So I think I learned that from her. That's intriguing. Well, you did prepare to answer the podcasting question. So let me ask (laughs) it, right? So who did you learn that skill from? Well, it hasn't really come from a single place. There was a program I did that sort of put me over the edge in terms of thinking about doing a podcast to actually doing a podcast. And I got all riled up and I I did a number of different, um, you know, interviews and kind of sat on it for months and then I finally actually connected with a community on Facebook called We Are Podcast and I feel like it was that group that really put the pieces together for me to be able to actually move from having this idea to having these um, these interviews to actually putting it through the um, you know all of what needs to happen to actually get it out into the ether so people can listen to it Hmm. so it was yeah a a whole range of different people and i'm glad you did follow through though it's really fascinating to me that i'm in trinidad um, which is all the way in the caribbean and um, Mm -hmm. you know it's that the impact can occur in that i mean i was impacted tremendously by by Stephen and what he expressed but it came from the questions Mm. you asked right so yeah one conversation at a time Go ahead. Absolutely. And it's it's really fascinating to me to, you know, be this person in Melbourne, Australia, having these conversations with, you know, lots of Australians, but also people from overseas, people from the US, people from Canada, people from Argentina, um, all over the place, and to develop an international listenership. So I saw, you know, people from Canada and the US creeping up as far as numbers of listeners and then starting to see Japan and Germany also, you know, surpassing my Canadian listeners because I grew up in Canada, so I have a lot of community there, but to see people on the other side of the world that I have no connection to being a fan of my show and being able to um, really uh, I guess, recognize the the power of these conversations. So it's been a fascinating journey. Yeah, definitely is. Definitely is. So you've gotten your feet wet or probably a bit more now that you're probably knee deep in it, right? It's been, yeah. it's been a while. Uh, why will you continue? Well, it's been a year, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll continue because it is deeply fulfilling for me. One of the things I didn't anticipate in becoming a podcaster was that, yes, I chose a topic that was really of interest, but it was the conversations themselves that really brought me into a space of really deep fulfillment and connection to these people who are making these choices and and doing things differently and leading the way and inspiring the rest of us. So I get inspiration from that. So I will definitely keep doing it for that reason. Wonderful. Well, do tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. The thing I've done consistently over the last three years is 
my morning yoga practice. It's quite simple. It's primarily just a sun salutation and it takes me all of two minutes. But it took a long time to get to the point where I was actually doing it and actually doing it consistently. So one of the other thing I learned from my mum was about yoga and meditation. And that was something that she did um, when I was younger. And I was, you know, as a teenager, kind of rejected all of that stuff and just thought, oh, my mum does that. But kind of knowing cognitively that it was a good idea, that it was, you know, a good practice, it healthy, it was good for my mind body and I knew that I wanted to, to cultivate a practice but it really took me some deep diving into my resistance to mm. move through that and then actually start doing it and then yeah now I really notice that if I don't do it my body feels it mm. so the principles that you just expressed there right or even the process let's not call it the, pr the principles the process have you seen that mm. applicable in different aspects of your life Oh, absolutely. I mean, as a, a coach and as a consultant, I work with people to change um, their practices and to, to, to move through those barriers. So yeah, I definitely can speak from personal experience about learning about the, you know, the what motivates us and what um, impedes us from making the changes that we want to make. And often it's stuff that you just can't see, you don't think of, it's in our blind spot. So yeah, I see that a lot in um, organizational change, um, organizational development, uh, with individuals who are wanting to, you know, push past the barriers that they set for themselves or can't see that they're setting for themselves, and, and especially in, in terms of leadership, being able to really step up. We and this is exactly what tall poppy is about. Tall poppy rises above, but it takes a lot to get there to be able to understand ourselves and be able to to move through that stuff that we can't see. Love it, love it, love it. She's amazing. <laughs> well, amazing audience, we are live with Athra Street. Again, she is the podcast host of Tall Poppy. Poppy spelled P-O-P-P-Y. It's the flower, right? Tall Poppy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's switch gears for a moment now, Tathra, <laughs> and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Tathra, what is your earliest childhood memory i think my earliest memory is when my parents were trying to teach me how to say thank you i couldn't understand why they wouldn't just give me the cookie <laughs> and i was like just give it to me already but they're like you know so I, I i have this vivid memory of standing next to a sort of dark red velvet curtain mm, and and being offered this cookie, but not being actually given to it until I said the magic word. And so finally I got it, but it took me a while. And I just, yeah, it it, uh, it seemed paradoxical to me at the time. <laughs> yeah. So how old do you think you were? I think I was maybe two. Why I'm do you sure. think it's so clear? I, I'm, I don't know. I wonder if it was just the, the, the heightened confusion and uncertainty or if it was the curtain. I don't know. My mom actually says that she doesn't remember having a curtain of that color or type, but yeah. that's what stuck in my memory. Yeah. don't know. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Yeah, please. So this is probably rebellious, but it's just um, amazing. The rebellion in you that you spoke about where what you believe belongs to you should be yours mm. it's just intriguing that your parents were teaching you um your mother specifically was were, were teaching you something though that it's you know it's 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 back to front it's reverse engineering if you would that you say thank you for the thing you own <laughs> but it works that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, when we're children, our perception of, of what reality is is very different than um, than our parents' perception and then our own perception later in life. So, yeah, it's hard to say. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely have that rebellious spirit. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. But it's intriguing, though. The, the rebellion comes. So let's go just a one, one page deeper or one turn page, right? So it's intriguing, right? Like rebellion is stating that you deserve something that you believe you own already, right? Mm, I think I probably look at it in a different way. Uh, I see it. Share with uh, me. I, I see it from the perspective of um, something's not okay in the world, and I'm pushing against it. And so, as an activist, when I was younger, I, I could see that there was a lot of environmental destruction. I could see that there was a lot of um, poverty and inequity, and that felt wrong to me. So it felt like my duty to, to um, say that that's not okay and to push against the system that I, I could see that was doing a lot of damage to the environment and to people. Mm. And do you believe that you owned that? Like, 
like you owned that right then yeah like you owned the right to do that i don't know i I think of ownership um as i guess i think of of the world as more collective and and that we are collectively responsible than this is mine and it should be mine i yeah I, i don't think of it that way yeah the word definitely gets crossed up there doesn't it the ownership versus responsibility mm yeah yeah, I mean, I, I think I get what you're what you're trying to say, but yeah, yeah we could stay here forever. Like yeah, we could definitely <laughs> stay here forever. Yeah, but it's just it's just intriguing to me that yeah. that there's a there's an element of ownership um, with responsibility. Like mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I feel as though this belongs to me, but not from the perspective of it's mine, but that it belongs to me so that it can then be shared with so many other people. Mm. So it's like my right to make sure this is right for other people. Mm. That kind of ownership thingy. Mm. All right. I will not pong any more. <laughs> Let's okay. turn. All right. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years mm-hmm. old, what was your favorite song? I think it was When Doves Cry by, P- by Prince because I remember getting um, my birthday present was, I think it was actually, it might even been an eight track. Um, actually, no, it was a cassette tape because we had an eight track and um, yeah, it was sort of that crossover time. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it was When Doves Cry by Prince. All right, all I remember right. screaming when I got the present. I was like, yeah, so excited. <laughs> <laughs> right, my friend. Well, we have arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Mm-hmm. Are you ready, Tathra? Yes, I'm ready. Tathra, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes and no, indirectly, I suppose, yeah. Are you married? Uh, it's not legal for me to be married uh as of yet in this country but we've just voted to change the law so hopefully we'll be able to do that next year do you have children no i don't do you believe in god uh i believe in a higher power do you have an inner circle of friends yes do you watch tv for more than three hours a day no how about three hours a week yes what about screen time the phone and the computer is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day oh it's probably about that it fluctuates and i try and keep it uh, under that but it's probably around eight ish depending including work days Right. Tathra, if you had to share with us a statement, if you would, your own unique statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say that is? I would say that you are capable of more than you think Hmm. and that you don't know the difference you make. You have everything that you need to make the change that you want. Hmm. Tathra, this has been a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I just want to clarify what I said about you have everything you need. The thing that that includes is the people around you and your ability to ask for help, to give them an opportunity to contribute to to you because it feels good to help, but it always doesn't always feel good to ask for help, but trust me that it's better to ask than not to. Tatra Street, this was a great pleasure. Hey, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. My pleasure. Thanks very much. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.